Okay, we are going to begin our journey through the solar system and how to animate our ships. We're going to put them on a path which will act like a roller coaster track. The ships, even though you can't see the roller coaster track, will walk onto that path and animate through our solar system. So the first thing we have to do is draw that path. And then later, we're going to attach our ships to that, create cameras to film it while it flies along that path. So today, I'm just going to do a review of how to do the path. And then tomorrow, there'll be a review of the camera up on YouTube and um, uh, so forth and so on and all that stuff. All right, so let's stop this. So let's see if I have, I think I have one open there. Here we go. So you can kind of see... This one is a little bit of a different animation. It's basically staking off from like a little star base, but um, you can see this is the ship right there. And then this black line, that spline right there as it's called, uh, is the track for the ship to fly along. And so if you watch the ship, we're gonna take it off of the cameras and we'll just go to the default camera. Oh, I have to turn off the stage off. Okay, and then as we scrub it, you can see the ship will stick along that black line as I scrub through the animation, and that's basically the invisible road for the ship to fly along. So it sticks to that, kind of like a ride at Disneyland where, you know, you think you're steering the boat or, you know, the whatever it does, it, but it's stuck on a track and you really don't have to. Okay, so that is invisible though when it animates, so it looks like it's flying on its own. Um, and that's how they do it. Um, so the first thing that you're going to have to do is go to your solar system, the one that you've animated here, and you're going to have to draw the track. You can see I have one already drawn here. You want it to be roller coaster y, so that means like, you know, ups and downs, lows and highs. You don't have to make it crazy. But it has to be smooth as a uh, silk with big wide turns. There can't be any rough, jagged, zigzaggy, sharp turn spots. Otherwise, it looks like uh, the sh it'll give you whiplash, like the movie Cloverfield, the monster movie where the camera's shaking around. It'll look like your head's whipping back and forth uh, and really have the a, a very poor impression of flight. Making things look like they're flying is actually not that easy. Um, otherwise, what happens typically if you do it poorly is that it looks like everything else is moving around but the object that you want to have flying. So we're going to do all these tricks with camera angles and all this stuff with it on the path here to make it look like it's flying through this animated solar system. Now, you don't want it to collide and smash into a planet. Inevitably, you probably will smash into a planet. And then we'll have to adjust that path to avoid the planet after the fact. All right, so we'll just adjust. That'll be the simplest solution um, to navigate through this dangerous solar system planet stuff. All right, so to draw your path, you're going to use a tool. I'm just going to go to a new file here called the pen tool. And what this does is you're going to draw it in your top view, top. And when you draw it, you're just going to start and click. And every time you click, it adds a point and connects those points with the line. So it's like follow the leader, connect the dots. Except you can't have straight lines like this with sharp angled uh, turns. It'll look like your ship will stop, then change direction, and then go, which will make poor animation. So what you do is you hold down your mouse button when you click down, and you hold down the mouse button. You gotta have some coordination here to do that. Don't let go of the mouse. You drag out, and when you drag out, it'll pull out these black handlebars, which direct the the, the spline. It's like a wire that you're bending and twisting into shape. And so you don't want to drag it out too far. You just want to drag it out about that far if it's furthest or, or less. And then just add another point. Okay. And whatever direction you drag that black handlebar in, that's the direction the line will go in. And so how do you like make your path? You can zoom out a little bit as you do this. You want it big and smooth like this with the points evenly spaced. And you can do like figure eights or, inf um, whoops, didn't mean to do that. Infinity seals or symbols, I mean, spirals, 
How much should you do? Well, you got to have enough for about a 2,000, 2,500 frame movie. And something like this will be perfect. And then at the end of your movie, you just want to kind of like take off into deep space here and disappear. Okay. Now you're going to be stuck forever clicking and clicking and clicking. Just get off the tool and you go back to the toolbar and just click off of the tool and that will stop the line. Now all of these things are adjustable so inevitably you probably will draw your first blind badly or poorly. You can go in there and click on them and adjust the handlebars to smoothen it out. So you just click on those little black boxes at the end of the handlebars. You can click on your points and move them around. You can even click on a point and hit delete and it'll reconnect to the nearest point. That might not help. You don't want any zigzaggy, twisty, turny stuff. And then when you're done, you're gonna go back to the main view and find that your thing is flat. And you're gonna, this is where you're gonna wanna like click on the individual points and lift them up and create your roller coaster part. Now where it comes in and out of the roller coaster part, that part you're gonna wanna like kind of like subtly adjust Otherwise, it ends up looking a little bit, um, or ends up a little bit sharp angled where it kind of like leans into that turn. So like it, that right there, it looks like it's dropping off a cliff. You want to kind of adjust it. You don't need that many like roller coaster parts, but you do need some. So you don't have to like, you know, you're not creating the revolution like in Magic Mountain with the loop-de-loo and all that. Although you could, if you really wanted to have some fun with it, I can show you how to do a barrel roll, with your aircraft, your spacecraft, and stuff like that. So um, you kind of come in here and lift it up in a few places and drop it down. And if I'm gonna lift this one up a little bit further and then kind of widen it a little bit and um, just have some fun with uh, the height and the low part. Now, when you draw your path, it should be noted that it should be pointed directly at your planet explosion. And then it's gonna veer off. So if this is gonna be my planet I'm gonna blow up, I don't want it too close, but I want it, let's just reduce that sphere so no one thinks that we're um, doing something too big. So this, let's say that's your planet exploding, okay? So what you're gonna wanna do is, um, in fact, I could go get a planet that's exploding. and let's go to our file here. We'll delete that sphere, sorry. I'll actually put an explosion in there. Kind of set up a little file here. All right. That's really too big. Let's scale the whole thing down. If not, I can show you on a different file. So we want it to be pointed at the explosion so your ship watches the planet blow up and then veers off and then goes through the solar system. So um, I don't know if I have an explosion here. Let's see. Uh, oh, you know the one I was originally showing you? Where'd I go? Pitch space fly. Okay. So if we look here, you're you're gonna wanna be pointed directly at the explosion when your ship takes off. So that's the planet blowing up. So your ship is gonna be pointed at that. It's gonna be flying directly at it, and then it's going to veer off after the explosion and then go on the tour. So that's how you wanna direct your explosion. So what that means is, is when you set up your path, it has to be pointed uh, to some extent at the explosion. So you're gonna to wanna to have the path kinda of like pointed directly 
at that explosion, just like this. So if I had a ship locked onto this path, it would head forwards and then veer off watching the explosion. Okay, that's important. If you start this path pointing in the wrong direction, and you might miss your explosion completely, because remember your explosion happens in the first like three or 400 frames of your movie. So you have to start this path pointed at that. You don't want it too close, because you don't want to fly through the explosion. You might hit bits and pieces, but you're gonna be like far enough back where you can see a good view of it, okay? Then you're gonna do your roller coaster effect to make sure it's perfectly smooth. Now what you don't wanna have in this was you draw your path, and I'll show you, is you don't wanna be all timid and go like and add 10 billion points. This will kill your animation, kill everything, it'll ruin it, wreck it, destroy it, so don't do that. You wanna click, hold down, drag, just drag the black handlebar in the direction you want the line to go in. Try to make your points consistently about the same distance apart. Don't have any like sharp, zigzaggy things like this. That'll ruin your animation. Big, smooth path. Now you do have a tool, I'm gonna to click off the tool, over here called the Spline Smooth Tool. It sometimes makes things worse, but if you did jack it up and it was like so horribly bad, you could go in there and smooth out your spline. And sometimes if you end up with like too many points, you can kind of go in there and select a point with your moving tool up here. That's how you can adjust them with this tool up there. And then just hit delete on the, and it'll re-delete. So, uh, or connect to the next nearest point. Or you could go in there and adjust those points and make them smooth, okay? So this might be too sharp of a turn right there, and I might wanna widen that up, okay? And then if it does smack into a planet and you slam face first into a planet, we can drop the path beneath the planet, we can have the path, we can like pull it inwards and, and pull it away, we can do all kinds of stuff to fix it. So don't, inevitably you're probably gonna hit a planet, but don't worry about it, we can fix that. And we won't be able to tell until we physically animate it. Now the way this tool works again, uh, is you go to your top view, select that to work, and then if, let's just say, this is my planet that's gonna explode, let's uh, make it a little bit smaller and let's say that's over here, then I want to start my path pointed at that planet and then veering off and then holding down your mouse button and dragging out those handlebars. You don't have to drag them that far so you're not doing that, otherwise you lose control. But you do want them consistently about the same distance apart. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect, but relative, you know and um, zoom out as you work and just create your nice little solar system. Do not just click and let go. That creates an angle straight line and that sucks for the animation. You must click and hold down, okay, as you drag these points out. Don't click and let go. If you screw it up, delete it and just draw another one. The more you do this, the better you'll get at it, okay? And it's okay if your path crisscrosses. Just try. Just think of a big semi truck or a school bus, and how it has to take big, wide turns, and how it cannot turn on a dime, or a plane, or a boat, or whatever. You want to. It's the same thing. And how much do you draw for your path? About what I'm drawing here, and then you take off into the deep part of the universe, never to return. So that is going to be how you draw your path. You can go click off the tool. When you draw with any of these points tools, you're gonna inevitably go to automatically this points tool over here on the side. When you want to manipulate the points and clean them up, you have to be on the same tool and you can push them around and smoothen them out with the handlebars and stuff like that. And you can hit delete you can pull out those black lines and, and correct it and all that kind of stuff. But when you want to go back and do modeling, you go back to your um, whoops, you go back to your model tool. So you're going to be going back and forth between these two tools, all right? And then you'll get more practice doing this. But you can't leave it flat like that. You're going to have to roller coaster it so that you have some ups and downs and stuff like that. 
All right, do not, I repeat, when you're drawing this, do not draw with like zigzaggy, jagged turns like this. And if you're not getting the hang of the tool, then just hit delete, delete, delete. Just delete the whole thing and start over again with a new one. Click, drag out, whatever direction you are pulling that black line in, it'll bend the line into that direction. So it's just follow the leader. And once that kind of clicks in your head, it's a pretty easy tool to actually use. And the good thing about getting used to this spline tool is any software like Illustrator, which is an illustration software, and a pretty good one, uh, or the Paths tool in Photoshop, or um, Path tools that you see in like After Effects and stuff like that, or Toon Boom, other softwares that we learn, um, ZBrush, uh, it's the same. They all work the same. So you learn it in one software, you learn it in the other softwares. It does have a little bit of a learning curve to kind of get used to it, so don't expect to be like super amazing um, uh, expert at it right away. It'll take a little bit of time. Do not put in like zigzaggy, twisty, whatever, clickety click, 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 you know, straight angle lines. Okay, you'll have a really poor, sucky animation if you do that. Okay, so um, you can always go, uh, worst case, the the, um, the spline smoothie tool and try to like smoothen it out if it sucks. That might help a little bit, or you can do it by hand if you click on it and go to. Um, click on those handlebars. You don't want to twist it in a knot, so don't have knots. You can untwist those. You want it nice and smooth, okay? And then that's going to be the track that your spaceship follows. This is the first order of business. We can't do our camera work until you take care of this, all right? And that's what we're going to do for today and tomorrow, and then tomorrow we'll start learning a little bit about cameras, okay? And the cameras are really important. And all video games, all movies, it's all the same. So it's really kind of fun to work with the camera because it, it's the same as live action. Um, you kind of like develop an eye to be a cinematographer because uh, that's the drama you're going to create in your space movie is through the camera. All right. Or even live action. Anyways, I'll see you in class. Goodbye.